Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna, Austria. The Withings Aura is an under mattress sleep tracker. And in this video, I'll compare its accuracy to a professional sleep EEG device for 15 nights. In short, the Withings sleep tracker did not perform great, with an average accuracy of 46.7%. In the rest of this video, I'll describe how I scientifically tested this device and what mistakes it makes. There are two important things I want to mention. First, if you're just interested in specific parts of the video, I do not want to waste your time. So here are the timestamps for each part of the video. Second, the device I'm testing is the first generation under mattress sleep tracker by Withings called the Aura. They also have a newer 2020 version called the Withings Sleep Analyzer that I hope to test in the future. Hopefully, however, this first generation sleep tracker will give some indication of the quality of under mattress sleep tracking. Also, the Withings Aura that I'm testing is not to be confused with the Aura Ring that also tracks your sleep. In this video, I'll compare 15 nights of polysomnography, which is the professional scientific way of measuring your sleep, against the same 15 nights measured by the Withings Aura under mattress sleep system. The professional scientific device basically measures your brain waves using EEG to capture your different sleep stages. If you're interested in how that works, I previously made a video about that, which you can find linked up here. Now, you might be wondering, why do I have access to a professional sleep EEG device? I'm a scientist specializing in data analysis and as a side project for the last two and a half years I've been tracking my sleep in collaboration with the Brain Institute in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. I actually have about 60 nights of data where I have both the professional sleep EEG device and the Withings device. The problem is that the Withings export function does not include data in that detail. So I had to manually go through all my data, put it in Excel and make some data science out of it. Now going through all this data manually was actually quite a lot of work. So after a few hours I put 15 nights in Excel and I figured this would be enough for the data analysis. However I wrote with things an email and if they give me access to all my data I might do an update video showing you all the results. Now for the 15 nights that I selected, I selected some from 2018 and some from 2019 to have a more representative sample. Unlike an EEG monitor, the Withings device does not use your brain waves to predict your sleep. Instead it relies on things like your heart rate and your movement. And in the end it will give you the three different sleep stages. So light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep. And of course it also tells you when you're awake. So let's look at an example night from the Withings device. This is the kind of output you would see in the Withings app in the morning, depicting your sleep stages over time. So I went to sleep at 19 past midnight and woke up at 7. And you can see that the different sleep stages are indicated by different colors and different heights. So this here, this dark blue is deep sleep, the medium blue is light sleep, and the light blue or cyan is REM sleep. And we have also some awake moments. As I mentioned, I also extracted the data so I could analyze it myself. And I made the same plots in my programming language. And that's what you see here. So this is the exact same plot, but now made by me, just to see that the data is exactly the same. So we see that we go through light sleep, where it's also light sleep here. Then we have deep sleep. Then we have these phases of light sleep and REM sleep and so on. Now, our goal is, of course, to compare this to the professional EEG data so we can see how accurate the Withings device actually is. Now, that's what I've plotted on top here. So on the bottom, again, we have the Withings Aura device and on top the scientific EEG. And in the end, we want to see how well is the match between the two. Now, of course, I compared many more nights. So here we see another night. And if you look at the overall accuracy of this night, we see that the overall accuracy is 54.3%. So over 54.3% of the night, the professional EEG device and the Withings Aura agree. And we can see, for instance, that indeed both say in the beginning that there was some deep sleep, then I went through some light sleep, but the Withings said there was more REM sleep here, and the Withings predicts much more deep sleep over the rest of the night. If we have a look at some other nights, we see similar patterns. So we again see that the Withings is able to predict the deep sleep here, which was there also according to the professional EEG device, but it predicts much more deep sleep than there actually was, and it doesn't pick up on all the REM sleep. And if we look at another night, we see a similar pattern again. So the deep sleep is generally picked up on by the Withings Aura device, but it predicts too much deep sleep and it doesn't really get all the REM sleep. And the overall accuracy for this night is 46.7%. Now here we have a final example night. Again, we see it picks up on the deep sleep, 
but it predicts REM sleep at moments where it shouldn't predict it, though it picks up on some of it, and it predicts too much deep sleep with an accuracy of 47.4% for this night. Here we see the overall accuracy over all nights where each dot here is a single night and its accuracy is on the vertical axis here and on the horizontal axis we have the date. So as I mentioned I took some nights from 2018 and some nights from 2019 to get a representative sample and as you can see there is some variation in the accuracy but overall the accuracy is 46.7%. Now next I want to know which sleep stages does the Withings device actually get wrong. And to do that I calculated the percentage of my night that was deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake for both the Withings device and the professional sleep EEG device. And if you compare them you can see that the Withings device predicts way too much deep sleep, which is also what we saw in some of the example plots, and it predicts too little light sleep. Also it says I was a bit more awake than I actually was, but of course I also want to know how does it get the sleep stages confused. So for instance, is all the extra deep sleep actually light sleep or is some of it also REM sleep? So let's have a look at that. Now what I've plotted here is called a confusion matrix. On the left here we have the Withings device and on the top the professional sleep EEG. And this tells you what the Withings device actually gets wrong. So on the diagonal here is everything that they predicted the same. So for instance here in light sleep it says 29.1% which means that 29.1% of my nights was predicted as light sleep by both the Withings device and the professional sleep EEG device. So here they agree, but here we see for instance 19.9%, which means that 19.9% was predicted as deep sleep by the Withings device, but it was actually light sleep. So let's look at what it actually gets wrong. So the one thing I mentioned here already is that it gets a lot of deep sleep wrong. So almost 20% of my nights, which were actually light sleep, were predicted as deep sleep by the Withings device, which means that a lot of the deep sleep that it predicts wrongly was actually light sleep, and a bit of it was also REM sleep. And what we can also see is that it confuses light sleep and REM sleep a lot. So here we see that 10.7% of my night, which was actually light sleep, was predicted as REM sleep. And also the other way around, about 10% of my night, which was actually REM sleep, was predicted as light sleep. But what we also see is that when I do have deep sleep, the Withings device mostly predicts that correctly. I showed you before that about 13.3% of my night was deep sleep and what this green 9% here means is that about 9% out of those 13.3% is predicted correctly as deep sleep. So that is indeed pretty good. So if you look at all nights combined, we see that the Withings device has an overall accuracy of about 47%. But how good is 47%? Well, one way of looking at that is by comparing it to other fitness devices. And I've previously made videos about the Fitbit Charge series and about the Aura Ring. In those videos, which you can find linked up here, I showed that the Aura Ring had an accuracy of about 60% and the Fitbit Charge series had an accuracy of about 70%. So overall, the Withings Aura Under Matter Sleep Tracker performs pretty poorly. And I expect it has partially to do with the difficulty of tracking somebody's sleep from under the mattress. In general, my feeling is that tracking things like somebody's heart rate or movement is much more accurate and easy to do directly on the body with something like a ring or a fitness watch than doing it under the mattress. Also, depending on the hardness and thickness on your mattress, the device might be more or less sensitive, which might also influence the results. I also noticed that the results were influenced those nights that my partner slept in the same bed as me. Now for the nights that I analyzed in this video, I always slept alone in the bed so that shouldn't influence those results, but for a lot of people that might be an issue. I'm not sure if the second generation 2020 Withing Sleep Analyzer is any better than this first generation, but overall the results from this video do not bode well for an under the matter sleep tracker. But hopefully I'll get to test it soon. Do you have any experience with the new 2020 Withing Sleep Analyzer? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you do that, the YouTube algorithm does fancy stuff and helps people find my videos. But of course, it's totally up to you. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and especially a wonderful night. See you in the next video.